Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here and we are back with another Pioneer deck tech. So today we're going to be talking about $50 Merfolk and Pioneer. It was a really fun list to build. Um, I'm really excited to bring this list to you guys. But as always, before we hop into the video here, if you'd like to check out the deck list, it is in the description below. If you want to check out the list, maybe consider purchasing it. And as always, let me know in the comment section below. What do you like about the list? What would you change about the list? Um, is there any decks that you'd like to see upcoming in this series? Just let me know in the comment section below so we're gonna hop into it here um overall i so obviously you guys know i love tribal decks and i realized like i don't know like i'm, I'm kind of going through a lot of the different tribes in magic and i realized i hadn't built a uh, merfolk deck yet so i'm like you know what why not we're gonna build a merfolk deck i think this list is really really fun and i think it's very very competitive as well so we're gonna hop into it here we have our one drops and a two drop we have four triton shore stalker and four mist cloak herald both the same thing they're both one once for one that can't be blocked um so there are different uh one drops that are in the format that we could play um i'm playing these ones specifically because of another card that's in our deck um i know sometimes decks will play the Benefic Biomancer and the Kumana Speaker, but I decided to play these because they can't be blocked because of a card. Again, that's going to be later in the video, but also because, you know, in those late game like board stalls, like even just chipping for two, maybe three a turn can end up like actually being extremely profitable. Um, so that's why I decided to go with the four of each of these instead. Then we're playing four Silver Gill Adept. It's a 2 1 for one and a blue. As an additional cost to cast Silver Gill Adept, reveal a Merfolk from your hand or pay three. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Just a really, really good card. It's an Elvish Visionary for Merfolk, pretty much. Um, fantastic card. Obviously, adds to our Merfolk army as well as draws this card. So, fantastic card to play in a deck like this. So next we have our Lords. So we're playing four Merfolk Mistbinder. It's a 2-2 two, two for green and a blue. Merfolk Shaman, other Merfolk you control, get plus one, plus one. So a little bit of a disclaimer. So this is the only green card in the entire deck. We're only playing the Merfolk Mistbinder because we really want another Lord. Like eight Lords is a really, really good sweet spot. Um, I'm hoping that with the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, when that comes out next year, we get another Merfolk Lord, which I'd be pretty surprised if we didn't. Um, but anyways, we're playing four of those. And then we're playing four Valadian Hexcatcher. Somewhat new card from Dominar United. It's a 1-1 one -one for one and a blue with Flash. Other Merfolk you control get plus one, plus one. Then we get Sacrifice of Merfolk. Counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays one. Fantastic card. Obviously, you know, we can trade like our Merfolk for like, big cards like uh like storm the festivals or anything like that like we can definitely we can definitely catch some people off guard with the flash especially you know flash in the lord it's just a fantastic card i really really love vidalian hex catcher arguably the best card in the deck as a whole so kupala is not technically a lord but i like to kind of consider it a lord so it's a two two for one blue blue uh, Kapala Warden of Waves, it's a Merfolk Wizard, spells your opponent's cast that target a Merfolk you control, cost two more to cast. Abilities your opponents can activate that target a Merfolk you control, cost two more to activate. So obviously just fantastic against decks that are playing removal, you know, makes it a little tougher for them to get rid of our Merfolk. What's also cool is if you're, you know, if you're not, sometimes not really good at getting your triggers, this is not like, it's not like Ward where you have to remember the trigger, this is just, it is two more to do anything i even like how with like like chandra torture defines they have to pay two mana to target our merfolk with like the minus which is pretty cool so definitely a big fan of kapala i really really like the card in this deck so our last slide of merfolk here we've got two harbinger of the tides it's a two two for blue blue merfolk wizard you may cast it uh you may cast as well at flash if you pay two more mana to cast it when Harbinger of the Tides enters the battlefield, you may return target tapped creature an opponent controls to its owner's hand. Um, Harbinger of the Tides, fantastic card. Um, obviously, you know, it's a dude that bounces uh, tapped creatures, which can be pretty awesome. You know, if you're playing against, like, Modern Green Devotion, you know, you could potentially, like, time walk them or something like that. Um, you know, if they're tapping their elves for mana, that kind of thing. So, Harbinger of the Tides, fantastic card to have in a deck. Four Merfolk Trickster, 2-2 two, two for 2 blue blue with flash when it enters the battlefield tap target creature on opponent controls 
it loses all abilities until end of turn. Merfolk Trickster is an absolutely awesome card. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. I mean, obviously, you know, shutting down land I feel like I always keep referring to Mono Green here. Um, but, you know, any problematic creature that's going to attack us in combat, we can tap it down. Um, anything with, like, relevant abilities, we can uh, target it with that, make it lose all abilities. So there's a lot we can do with Merfolk Trickster. It's just a really, really good card. I mean, I can't say enough good things about Merfolk Trickster. Then we're playing three Master of Waves. It's a 2-1 for three and a blue with protection from red, Merfolk Wizard. Elemental creatures you control get plus one, plus one. When Master of Waves enters the battlefield, put a number of one zero blue elemental creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to blue, which obviously a lot of our cards have a lot of blue pips. So, you know, we're going to be getting probably about four or five um, elementals on average with Master of Waves. Protection from red is obviously fantastic. It dodges like Play with Fire, dodges like Blood Tithe Harvester. Um, technically, if they board wipe, I mean, all of our other creatures are probably going to go down, but we keep the master, I guess, technically speaking. Um, master Wave is just a fantastic card in general. Uh, it, you know, those, a lot of the time when you play Master of Waves, your opponent has to have something or they are, it, they're just dead at that point. Because, you know, we're getting like four or five, two ones with flying. So it's like, okay, show me what you got. Otherwise, you're dead. So, uh, Master of Waves fantastic card to be playing in a deck like this so this is our last non-land slide we're playing for curious obsession which is the main reason why we're playing the eight unblockable creatures um at the beginning so curious obsession one blue enchantment enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player you may draw a card at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, sacrifice Curious Obsession. So, obviously great with unblockable creatures. We're just always attacking. So, that's why we're playing the four Curious Obsession. Then we're playing three Spell Pierce. One blue instant. Counter target non-creature spell, unless this controller pays to... Kind of just like a staple card, I feel like, for Merfolk. I feel, I feel like Merfolk, for like years, has always been playing Spell Pierce. Um, obviously, you know, we can counter removal spells with it. We can counter any big instant or sorceries that our opponent's playing. Counter some Planeswalkers. Counter a battle, I guess, now. You know, we can kind of pretty much get whatever we need to counter with the Spell Pierces. So, just fantastic to play in a deck like this. So, our land base is pretty simple. We're playing four unclaimed territory. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. We can tap it for a colorless mana or tap it for one mana of any color uh, to use it for only a cre to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So, yes, I do know that unclaimed territory is strictly worse than secluded courtyard, but in this deck, we don't have any activated abilities that require mana. So, that's why we're playing the unclaimed territory because they are like way cheaper on the budget than the secluded courtyards. So, just figured I would mention that. Then we're playing for Yavi Maya Coast. We can tap it for a colorless, or we can tap it for a green or a blue mana and deal one damage to us. So, obviously, it's an untapped dual land. Yes, we take a little bit of damage, but having that consistency on untapped land is fantastic um again those are the we only need the one green for the um the merfolk mistbinders so we don't really need a lot of green in this deck even with our sideboard we don't really have any we don't actually have any green cards so it's just the one that's why i figured we could probably get away with just playing eight green sources then we're playing 14 islands obviously um so as the spicy land of the day i decided to play this beautiful beautiful artwork by rob alexander i believe this is from the duels of the planeswalker this specific one but i know this was reprinted in a couple different sets um i just really like the feel of it overall it kind of reminds me of ixalan a little bit you know you got like the trees there you got like that nice little like waterfall going the cave it kind of seems like a little nice cove where some merfolk would probably hang out so that's why i chose this beautiful island as the basic land choice so we're gonna hop into the sideboard here we got two slides because we're so lucky for that today we're playing two tormod script zero man artifact we can sacrifice it exile cards from target player's graveyard obviously anybody's playing graveyard shenanigans we're gonna try and stop that then we're playing three mist caller one one for one merfolk wizard we can sacrifice mist caller until end of turn if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast exile it instead so this is like our version of Containment Priest um, against obviously like the Neoform Attraxa decks. It's good against um, the uh, Creativity decks as well. They're like, oh, I'm going to cheat some dudes and play. And you're, we're like, um, try again. So uh, Mist Caller, fantastic card. Um, and it also stops Storm the Festival as well. Figured I would mention that as well. So great card. Then we're playing two Tidebinder Mage. 
2 2 for 2. When it enters the battlefield, tap target red or green creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Tide Binder Mage. Obviously, red and green mages absolutely hate Tide Binder Mage. Believe me, I would know. I play a lot of red green decks and I have lost to Tide Binder Mage many a times. So, absolutely fantastic card. Can't say enough good things about Tide Binder Mage. Next, we have two reality shifts. One in a blue instant exile target creature. Its controller manifests the top card of their library, which means that player puts the top card of their library onto the battlefield face down to the 2-2. If it's a creature card, it can be turned up face, it can be turned face up anytime for its mana cost. So obviously just a just a way to get rid of uh, any problematic creature. It exiles it as well. Um, yes, they manifest the top of their library, but that's fine. I thought about playing like a rabbit hybridization, but I, I think we'd rather give them a 2-2 morph than a 3-3 lizard. Um, and it also destroys exile, which exile can be pretty relevant, especially for cards like Cavalier Thorns. So I figured we'd go with the reality shift. Then we're playing four Wizards Retort, one blue blue instant. This spell costs one less to cast if you control a wizard. Counter target spell. We are playing a lot of wizards and i mean a lot of wizards i would almost go as far as to say that most of our merfolk in the deck are wizards i know we have a couple like warriors or rogues but i know a lot of them are wizards so i figured we could get away with playing wizards retort which if we have a wizard is just counterspell it's flat counterspell i mean everybody loves counterspell right so that's why we're playing wizards retort then as our spicy card we're playing two sleep two blue blue sorcery tap all creatures target player controls those creatures don't untap during that player's next untap step against a lot of aggro decks this is just it's over you know we go sleep attack you okay we untap you don't attack boom game's over most of the time um or at the very least it puts them way behind so i really really like sleep it's a really underrated card i feel like in the format because obviously it's you know it's a blue card and there's not a blue aggro deck so it's kind of like it's not a card that control wants to play they'd rather just wrap the board so that's why we're playing sleep fantastic card i love sleep so that's all we got here that is the entire deck i feel like we flew through this again you know I, maybe that's just how the budget decks typically go just because there's less cards and you know less things to talk about i guess but that is budget merfolk 50 dollars in pioneer I'd like to thank everybody for joining me on this deck tech let me know in the comment section below if you end up actually building the list what you would change and as always if there's any suggestions that you have just let me know in the comment section below i'd like to thank everybody for joining me and i'll catch you in the next one